question four, right? We continue. They say the flow diagram below shows three organic reactions, namely reaction one, two, and three. Various organic and inorganic products are formed as a result of these reactions. All right, so now we're going to answer the questions that follow. They say use the flow diagram above to answer the questions, the following questions. Right, so the first one, they say define the term saturated compounds. Remember that saturated compounds are compounds that consist of only single bonds between carbon atoms. Okay, right, and uh, 4.2 says to us, 2-bromopentane undergoes hydrolysis. Okay, um, so this is one of the reactions that occur there. That is in reaction one. Uh, where is reaction one? Okay, there it is uh, over there. Okay, so they say to us, um, two bromopropane undergoes hydrolysis. They say to us, name the type of reaction represented by reaction one. Now, ladies and gents, I want you to please note that in that case, that would consist of a substitution reaction. Okay, so uh, that would be a substitution reaction. Now, remember that in the place, now for reaction one, right? So remember what would happen here. So it, which means that the halogen would come off and we would replace it with the hydroxide ion that comes from this um, a, a strong base. And so as a result, that becomes a substitution reaction. So the next one says, name the inorganic product uh, that is formed in the reaction. So what would have happened? So remember, you removed uh, the bromide ion, okay? And that means that the bromide ion that would have actually been part of the 2-bromopentane uh, uh, is removed and you're replacing it with hydroxide ion, right? But now you still have the potassium plus that bromide that came off. And so that means that we are going to form, in that case, uh, potassium bromide. Okay, uh, they said the name. So I'm going to say this is potassium bromide. Okay, right. So that is our uh, reaction. Now they say to us, give one condition, one reaction condition there, okay, um, that we are going to obviously uh, react there with a dilute strong base, right? So it must be a dilute strong base that we use over there. Now remember that if we use this concentrated strong base, we are going to form an elimination reaction, okay? So that's a dilute strong base there, okay? Right, I hope that uh, you've got it, ladies and gents. All right, now let's go, um, uh, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, please, you can also mention that it happens in the presence of, of mild heat. Um, so you can either mention that or the fact that uh, there is mild heat. Let's go to the next question. They say, consider compound B. All right, all right, so we'll look at compound B there. So we've now formed an alcohol, right? So this is going to be a two pentanol, okay? Or pentan two all, right? So they say write down the IUPAC name. I've just given it uh, that name there. So this is going to be pentan two all. Okay, so that's our compound. And then they say, Name the type of reaction represented by uh, in reaction two. Okay, so let's go and check reaction two. So we are taking the uh, the alcohol, right, in the presence of heat as well as sulfuric acid. So we are going to form an elimination reaction there. Okay, and what would we then uh, produce? Okay, so we would actually have, uh, uh, this is actually a, uh, a dehydration reaction, right? So we're going to form an alkene there. They say name the type of reaction represented by reaction two. So that would be an elimination reaction. And 
um, on the next one, they say write down the structural formula of the major product. Now, please, I want you to note, ladies and gents, whenever we are going to eliminate there, we're going to use Zaitsev's rule. And Zaitsev's rule simply says that if we are eliminating, we know definitely we're going to take away uh, the hydroxide ion, right? But now which hydrogen are we going to take with it, right? So Zaitsev's rule says we eliminate the hydrogen that comes from the carbon with the least number or with a lesser number of hydrogens. So it would be this hydrogen that is eliminated, okay? So that means I'm going to now form a double bond, right, between carbon number two and carbon number three, right? And so that would be uh, two pentanol, okay? That is what I'd form there. So they say to us, uh, write down the structural formula of the major product. Uh, I don't have much space there. So what I'll do is uh, I will try to um, write it over here. Okay, so we've got pent. So we know we've got a double bond between carbon number two and carbon number three. Okay, so that is what it would look like. Okay, right. So make sure that the number of hydrogens, or rather the number of bonds around each carbon is four. So we've got a hydrogen there as well as another hydrogen. Please note, it would be between carbon number two and carbon number three because we've applied Zaitsev's rule. Right, and then the next one, they say write down the chemical formula of the inorganic product formed. So remember, the um, inorganic product, we've eliminated H and OH, so we would actually form uh, water, H2O, right? And that is the inorganic product. Okay, so the next one is reaction three. They say in reaction three, let's have a look at what reaction three looks like. So we're going to take that alkene that we have there, right? And remember, we said that uh, alkene is 2-pentanol, and we are reacting it with hydrogen, right? That's hydrogenation. And of course, we're going to form an alkane being pentane in that case. So we're going to break that pi bond over there and form pentane, right? So firstly, they say, uh, name the type uh, of addition reaction. So we are reacting with hydrogen, so this is going to be hydrogenation okay so that's the type of uh, addition reaction that we have there and they say give the chemical formula of the catalyst needed for this reaction so remember whenever you are hydrogenation uh, hydrogenating right so we always use either platinum okay or we can use palladium okay or we can even use nickel as a catalyst, all right? So any of those. Uh, platinum is more popular, so you can just mention that one. All right, now the next question. They say, esterification is one of the most important reactions in both uh, organic synthesis and the chemical industry. Okay, they say when making an ester, 60 grams of propen one all reacts with excess ethanoic acid okay so in this case note that the ethanoic acid is in excess meaning that the propan one all okay propanol in this case propan one all would be the limiting reagent right so it would dictate or determine how much of the product is produced and they say to us uh, and it produces 90.78 grams of an ester and water okay right now they say the balanced chemical uh, equation below shows the reaction that takes place so the first question that they ask us there is write down the structural formula uh, for the ester produced okay so note what did we take we, we took propen one all right so it has three carbons Okay, and we've got that oxygen that's in line with the carbons. Okay, and we took ethanoic acid, so we're going to have C 
with a double bond O. Okay, so everything else is just a hydrogen there. We're going to place those hydrogens. And that is the ester that we have. Okay, so that's what our ester looks like. Okay, please make sure that the number of hydrogens right, does agree with the type of structure. And please note in this case, that means that this is our functional group. Okay, that entire thing over there. Uh, you can encircle it. Okay, just to show it there. Now they say to us, give the IUPAC name of the ester. So remember that you always name the alcohol side first. Okay, so the alcohol side is the one without the double bond O. Okay, so the alcohol was propen. So this is going to be propyl. Okay, and ethanoate. Okay, please remember that the suffix for esters is await. Okay, so that's propyl ethanoate. All right, now let's go to the next one. They say to us, give the chemical name of the catalyst used. All right, so they said the name and not the formula. So remember that anytime that we are uh, undertaking uh, esterification, we do use sulfuric acid as a catalyst. So that is sulfuric acid there. All right, and then finally, they say calculate the percentage purity of propen one ol All right, ladies and gents, so what you do for percentage purity? So it then suggests to us that not all of this propen one ol right? Not all the 60 grams were actually pure, right? So this is the total mass of the um, uh, of propen one all together with it with its impurities. However, we got the mass of the ester. Okay, so let's find out what is the number of moles of the ester that are formed. Okay, so number of moles uh, of um, uh, propyl ethanoate. This would be mass divided by the molar mass. Now, ladies and gents, uh, we're going to have to use our periodic table in this case to calculate the molar mass. Now, the mass is 90.78 divided by, right? So, uh, the ester C5, so that would be 5 times 12. Remember that the molar mass for carbon is 12. Uh, so that's 10 hydrogens, so that would be plus 10 times 1. The molar mass for hydrogen is 1, plus this would be for oxygen, this is 16 times 2. So that would be the molar mass. Okay, so let's find out what the number of moles are. Okay, so we've got 90.78, that's divided by, that's 5 times 12, plus... 10 times 1 plus 16 times 2. All right, so we get 0 0.89. And that's the number of moles of the ester that are produced. And remember, the ester can only be made from the pure proper uh, propanol, right? Propen 1 all. So now let's find out. Our stoichiometric ratio says to us, for every one mole of propen one ol, I will get one mole of the ester. So meaning the number of moles of esters uh, of ester that I produce will be the same as the number of moles of uh, the ethanol, uh, uh, yeah, the propanol that is used. So therefore, it means that the number of moles of propanol at C3H8OH will be equal to 0 0.89 moles. And please remember, why is that the case? Because for every one, there is one. So that's a one-to-one -one ratio. Right, so is it possible for us to get the mass of the, S, of the propen one all? 
Definitely, right? So we can say, well, we know number of moles is equals to mass divided by the molar mass. But because we're looking for the mass this time around, this would be number of moles multiplied by molar mass. Okay, we know that's 0 0.89. Okay, now note three carbons. So this would be three times 12 again, plus the molar mass of hydrogen. We've got eight hydrogens. Actually, we've got nine, including uh, the one from the OH. So I'm going to say rather nine times one plus that one oxygen there. So that's plus 16. Okay, so let's get the mass of, uh, um, of that guy. So this is multiplied by uh, three times 12 plus nine. Okay, nine times one plus 16. Okay, and I get 160.2. So that's 160.2 grams. So now we need to check the percentage purity, right? Okay. Um, all right. So that's the ethanoic acid that we, we got there. Uh, let me just check. I mean, we've got the 0 0.89 grams there. That's for the ethan, uh, that's for the ester. Okay, and we now found out the mass of the ester. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, rather the mass of uh, the ethanoic acid uh, that we used. Oh, yeah, I see where the problem is. I said C3, okay, uh, where it was supposed to be. Yeah, the ethanoic, I mean, sorry, the propane one all rather. Uh, they gave us 60 grams over there. Okay, so that tells us that, yeah, I'm just wondering where is it that we went wrong on C3H7OH. Uh, let me just check again, ladies and gents. So we've got C3, so that's 3 times 12 plus um, H7, okay, but I said H... Uh, so that's C3H8O, um, so that would be nine hydrogens and plus the oxygen, which is 16. Uh, please, if you can verify for me, ladies and gents, that's the number that I get. So that's three times 12 plus nine plus 16. Oh, yeah. So I might have, um, I might have made a mistake. So the mess there is 54.29 grams okay apologies about that right now how do we calculate the percentage so we're going to say the percentage purity right would be the mass of the pure or the reacted amount of uh, ethanol uh, propan one all divided by the total mass right and this is multiplied by 100. Okay, so that's 54.29 over 60 times 100. And let's check what that gives us. This is divided by uh, 60. And we multiply that by 100. Okay, and I get a percentage purity of 90.48%. All right, so that would be our percentage purity of, um, yeah, I think that's what I would get. All right, please just verify that for me as well. Okay, just to make sure that we get to the right answer. All right, so ladies and gents, we leave it there. All right. We are going to go on now to the next question.